or use the book either one you want to do now you stay right with me the national debt just write that national debt the debt that we are in as a nation first of all Americans are like sheep they never ask themselves questions if we have a national debt of six trillion dollars it would be interesting to know who we owe Did you ever ask yourself that question? Well, the national debt. Well, what is it? Who do we owe? Where'd we get the money? What'd we borrow it for? What's the interest rate? Who are we paying back? We don't know. We just go on. Listen to this. The national debt in 1901 was one billion dollars. One. It stayed there until World War I and it went up 25 billion dollars after World War I. A jump from 1 billion to 25 billion as a result of one war. 1942 to 1952 it went from 25 billion to 72, no excuse me, let me start over. 1918 to 1941 on the eve of World War II, it had gone from 25 billion to 49 billion. 1942 to 52, it went from 72 billion to 265 billion. From 1962 to 1970, it went from 303 billion to 383 billion. From 1971 to 76, from 409 billion to 631 billion. From 1990, in 1990, from 76 to 90, it went from 631 billion to 2 trillion. You know that a trillion is a thousand billion. You understand that? I don't, I don't want to get these numbers so big to you that you don't understand. Let me break it down for you. In 1990, the national debt was 2 trillion dollars. As of today, you have to get it every day. As of today, it's six trillion from two trillion, six trillion seven hundred ninety five billion nine hundred and fifty five million seventy four thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. That's what we owe today. To whom? To whom do the citizens of the United States of America owe seven trillion dollars? Wait, it's growing. Are you ready? It's growing one billion six million dollars a day. How's it growing if we're not borrowing anymore? Thank you! But your Bible doesn't call it interest. Your Bible calls it usury. I dare you to touch somebody and say, you're using me. Oh, uh-huh. See, when that banker comes along and said, well, it's just thus and so interest, you ought to look right back at him and say, you're using me. See, you don't think you can get out. You're looking at me like it's a mocking dream. Here's what your Bible says, Exodus 22, 25. If you lend money to any of my people that are poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, neither shall thou lay upon him usury, neither shall you lay upon him interest. Leviticus 25, 36 and 37. Take thou no interest of him or increase, but fear thy God, that thy brother may live with thee, that thou shalt not give him the money by interest, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. Deuteronomy 23, 20. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand unto, to the land whither thou goest to possess it. Here's what Thomas Jefferson said. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, 
First by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them, around the banks, will deprive the people of their property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Do you know right now, if we got together as the American people and we sold every building and every square inch of American soil for the total amount of its worth, we would have to pay back that America and two more. Somebody owns this nation. You drive in here all reared back in that car like you own it. Miss a payment and see who owns it. And see if they give you the interest back that you paid on the loan that you've been paying for five years. You think you own your house? Miss four payments and they'll stick a foreclosure sign out in front of you because the bank owns your house. I walked around my house yesterday. I said, thank you, Lord. Look at this driveway. Thank you, Lord. They can't take it from me. Thank you for my house. Thank you for my children's bedroom. They can't take it from me. Because I don't owe nobody nothing. The Bible says, owe no man anything but to love him. Come on now, shout a little bit. There are three types of conquest. Number one, war. Captives hate and rise up against the aggressors and it takes too much force and money to maintain a situation where you have taken a nation captive by war secondly religious conquest but by nature religion lacks military force to regain control once the captives are disillusioned the third form is economic conquest place the people under tribute with no visible force no marching army no guns, no police, no secret, what was that secret thing that they had in Russia, the KGB, no KGB, no secret service, take them captive by requiring tribute of them, by requiring them to pay you interest. Here, here. Tribute is collected by legal debts and taxes. Therefore, those that are paying them believe they are paying for their own good and the good of others and to protect them from some unseen enemy. Now watch. The captors become the benefactors and the protectors. In other words, you're paying tribute for what you believe to be his protection. Does that sound like organized crime to you? But you never looked at interest that way. Why are you looking at me so funny? You want me to go on? Matthew 4.10 Worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. Exodus 20 verse 3 Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Romans 13, 8, owe no man anything but to love him. The founding fathers in, the artic in Article 1 of the United States Constitution wrote, Congress alone shall have the power to coin and regulate money and the value thereof, because only Congress is subject to the vote of the people. Isn't this supposed to be government of the people? By the people? For the people? Do you know that man can create two things? He can create an immortal being. That's what you do when you have a baby.